وَلَا شَيْءَ مِثْلُهُ And there is nothing like him. And there is nothing like him. Shaykh Al-Fawzan said, This is taken from the saying of Allah the Most High, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءَ Surah Ash-Shura, the 42nd, the 42nd Surah, Ayah 11. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءَ and there is nothing like him. I mean, there is nothing like Allah. He said, and also the saying of Allah the Most High, وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدْ Surah Al-Ikhlas, the 112th Surah, Ayah 4. With the explanation, and there is none equal or comparable to him, I mean to Allah. And his saying, He the Most High, فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا Surah Al-Baqarah, the second surah, ayah 22. With the explanation, So do not set up any rivals for Allah. Shaykh Al-Fawzan said, Meaning, those who are alike or similar to him. And he quotes a fourth evidence for this point. He said, and his saying, He the Most High, هَلْ تَعْلَمُ, هل تعلم لَهُ سَمِيَّا Surah Maryam, the 19th Surah, Ayah 65. With the explanation, Do you know of any namesake for him? Do you know of any namesake for Allah? And as Shaykh Sa'adi Abdul Rahman ibn Nasir of Sa'di rahimahullah said in tafsir of this ayah that the ayah is in the form of a question do you hal ta'lamu lahu samiyya do you know of any namesake for Allah it's in the form of a question but what is meant is a denial a negation hadhas tifhamun bi ma'na nafi it's in the form of a question but what it means is a denial there is no namesake for Allah Shaykh al-Fawzan said meaning Anyone like him, one who can share his name, he the perfect and most high. So he just quoted four separate proofs for this point. La shay'a mithluhu. And there is nothing like Allah. Then he said, So at tamthil, there being anyone like him, and at tashbih, there being anyone resembling him. Both of these are negated for Allah, the mighty Shaykh and majestic. Here, he said, both of these, at tamthil, declaring there is any, anyone like Allah, and at tashbih, declaring there is anyone resembling him, both of these are negated for Allah, the mighty and majestic. <coughs> so no one from his creation resembles him. So this is what is obligatory, that we affirm whatever Allah has affirmed for himself, and we hold that as our creed. However, we do not hold that he resembles anyone from his creation, nor do we hold that he is like his creation, he the perfect and most high. So the Shaykh makes the point here that indeed we affirm for Allah whatever He has affirmed for Himself. With regard to attributes, we affirm that for Him. However, as He said, along with the fact that we, att- we affirm His attributes, we do not hold that anyone from His creation resembles Him. Or rather, we, we do not hold that anyone from His creation resembles Him. He said this is what is obligatory, that we, we affirm whatever Allah has affirmed for himself and we hold it as our creed and belief. And we do not hold that he resembles anyone from his creation. And we do not hold that he is like his creation, he the perfect and most high. And he said, so this contains a, a refutation of the mushabbiha. This point contains a refutation of the mushabbiha. 
those who believe that Allah is like his creation. Those who do not differentiate between the creator and the creation. And this is a false and futile position. So he's mentioning refutation of the mushabbiha, those who hold that the creator, Allah, is like his creation. So this is a false and futile position. Then he said, and opposite to this position is the position of the mu'attila, those who negate Allah's attributes, those who deny Allah's attributes, they are the opposite extreme. He said, those who go, who go beyond limits in declaring Allah free, those who go beyond limits in tanzih, declaring Allah free, to such an extent that they deny for Allah that which he has affirmed for himself with regard to names and attributes, doing so as they claim to fr- flee away from declaring him to be like his creation. So Sheikh Al-Fawzan here has mentioned these two extreme groups. On the one hand, the first group, those who declare that Allah resembles his creation. Allah in his attributes, he resembles the creation in their attributes. And at the opposite extreme, those who deny Allah's attributes, the Mu'attila. The first group, the Mushabbiha, the second group, the Mu'attila. Those who are so afraid of affirming his attributes, that they start to deny his attributes. The Mu'attila. The Shaykh said, so both of these two groups go beyond the limits. The Mu'attila those who deny his attributes, they go beyond limits in tanzih. They go beyond limits in declaring him free and in denying any likeness. Whereas the other group, the mushabbiha, those who declare Allah's attributes to be like, the, like those of the creation, they go, they go beyond the limits in affirmation. I mean, they affirm the attributes but go beyond limits. They affirm Allah's attributes but then go on to say but they're like the attributes of the creation. Then the Shaykh said, whereas the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they take the moderate and middle position in between these two deviant extremes. The people of the Sunnah take the middle route. So they affirm for Allah whatever He affirmed for Himself in accordance with with what befits his majesty without tashbih without declaring his attributes to be like the attributes of the creation and without ta'til without denying his attributes doing so in accordance with the saying of Allah the most high laysa ka mithlihi shay wa huwa as-sami'ul basir wa huwa as-sami'ul basir surah ash-shura the 42nd surah ayah 11 so the Shaykh said that the position of the people of the Sunnah is in accordance with this ayah. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيءُ الْبَصِيرُ There is nothing like him and he is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. So this ayah gives a tremendous principle for the people of the Sunnah. And this ayah should be memorized by everyone who, who hasn't already memorized it and should be understood. There is, with the explanation, there is nothing like him and he is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, So his saying, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ There is nothing like him. This negates and denies any tashbih, any resemblance with the creation. So the first part of the ayah denies any resemblance with the creation. And his saying in the second part, وَهُوَ السَّمِيءُ الْبَصِيرُ And he, Allah, is the all-hearing one, the all-seeing one. This is a negation of ta'atil. It's a denial and negation of those who deny and negate his attributes. So this is the position which the people of the sunnah and the jama'ah proceed upon. So this ayah is a refutation of both of these extreme groups. It's a refutation 
of those who say that Allah's attributes are like those of the creation, the mushabbiha, because of the first part of the ayah, laysa kamithlihi shay, there is nothing like him. And it's a refutation of the second deviant group at the other extreme, the mu'attila, those who negate his attributes, those who flee away from affirming attributes for Allah. Because they say, if we affirm for Allah attributes, then the creation have attributes like that. So we'll be met, if we affirm these attributes, such as Allah's face, his hand, and so on and so on, if we affirm these things for Allah, then it says if we're making him like the creation. So we'll negate, we'll deny these things, we won't affirm these attributes for Allah. So the second part of the ayah is a refutation of them. وَهُوَ السَّمِيءُ الْبَصِيرُ And he is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. I mean, he is the one who has the attribute of hearing and seeing. So this ayah is a refutation of both of these extreme groups and a proof for the people of the sunnah, those who are upon the middle path. Then Shaykh al-Fawzan finished by saying, And so therefore it is said, المؤطل يعبد أدما والمشبه يعبد صنما والموحد يعبد إلها واحدا فردا صمدا This little phrase that summarizes this whole point that we just had which is why it is said that the muattil and we should be aware of these terms the muattil one who negates all those attributes and mushabbih the one who declares his attributes to be like the attributes of the creation. So as it is said, Al-Mu'attil, the one who negates Allah's attributes, worships something which does not exist. And the Mushabbih, the one who declares Allah's attributes to be like those of the creation, he worships an idol. And the Muwahid, the person upon true Tawheed, he worships the sole one who deserves worship, the one who is single, the independent Lord and Master. Al Mu'attilu Ya'budu Adaman, Wal Mushabbihu Ya'budu Sanaman, Wal Muwahidu Ya'budu Ilaham Wahidan Fardan Samadan. This phrase that neatly summarizes what we just had. The one who just Explain it that the first per- the first person, the Mu'attil, the one who denies Allah's attributes and doesn't affirm any attributes for Allah, therefore he worships that which has no attributes. Something that doesn't exist. Something that does not exist. So he worships something non existent. The one who flees away from affirming any attributes for Allah. He worships something that does not exist. Whereas the second one, the one who affirms Allah's attributes, but then goes on to say, and his attributes are like the attributes of the creation. Then in effect, he is worshipping an idol. Because Allah's attributes don't resemble the attributes of the creation. Whereas the third one, the person upon Tawheed, he is the one who worships Allah alone. <coughs> Just briefly, with regard to what Shaykh al-Albani said in his notes here, he mentioned about this point, وَلَا شَيْءَ مِثْلُهُ And there is nothing like him. He said, This is one of the, one of the fundamentals, from the fundamental principles of Tawheed, which is, that with regard to Allah the Most High, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ There is nothing like him. لَا فِي ذَاتِهِ وَلَا فِي صِفَاتِهِ وَلَا فِي أَفْعَالِهِ There is nothing whatever like Allah, Neither in his self, his that, nor in his attributes. I mean, there's nothing like Allah with regard to Allah's self. And there is nothing like Allah with regard to his sifat. There's nothing like Allah with regard to Allah's attributes. And there is nothing like Allah with regard to his actions. He said, however, the innovators and the people of Ta'wil, those who twist Allah's attributes, they take a principle by which they deny many of Allah's attributes, He the Exalted and Most High. So whenever their hearts are too constricted to believe in one of His attributes, He the Majestic and Most He the Mighty and Majestic, then they perform ta'wil, they twist the attribute 
and try and destroy it and deny it. He said, so they deny an attribute and they use as an evidence for what they are doing his saying, Laysa ka mithlihi shay. I mean, those who deny Allah's attributes say, we won't affirm for Allah a hand, we won't affirm for Allah a face, we will not affirm that Allah is ascended over his throne, we will not affirm such and such and such and such, he's descending. All of these things, the excuse that they do it, Shaykh Albani said, they use as a, an excuse. He's saying, Laysa ka mithlihi shay. There is nothing like him. He said, pretending to be ignorant of the end of the ayah, wa huwa sami al basir, and he is the all hearing, the all seeing. So this ayah gathers, declaring him free, along with affirming his attributes. So whoever wishes to be safe and sound in his creed, then he should declare Allah the Most High to be free from any resemblance to the creation without explaining his attributes away and without denying his attributes. Rather, he should affirm for Allah the mighty and majestic with regard to attributes, everything which he has affirmed for himself in his book or occurs in a hadith of his prophet without declaring that the creator resembles creation. This is the position of the Salaf and the author, rahimahullah, was upon it, following on from Abu Hanifa and the rest of the Imams.